close. Let me run through the radio controls. It's got the upgraded Harman Kardon system. It's got an in-dash CD player plus a multi-disc player in the trunk and AM FM system. And you can add an aftermarket iPod adapter, but I have not done that myself. I'll turn the system on. Radio comes on. There are controls in the steering wheel. You can change to the presets. And if you hold them down, it'll scan as well. And then you can go back to the presets. You can change volume up and down from there as well. I'll also scan through the CDs. When you hit the CD the first time, it goes to the in-dash CD disc. When you hit it a second time, it goes to the trunk multi-disc changer. You can use the six buttons here, just like which disc you want. I don't know if I have another disc in, let's see. And then you can also use, again, the steering control to change tracks, or you can change tracks on the radio here. I think you can scan through a track too, let's see, you know, multiple tracks. Lots of features there. There are two FM bands, FM1, FM2, and then there's like an automatic FM, which I frankly have never played with. You can scan the display to a time or to um, the radio station. It also will read um, the station name. Let me find a station that actually has a name. Okay, and it'll read what the station is and what's playing, etc. Uh, it'll scan through setting your bass treble, fader front and rear, balance front and rear, and then back to that one as well. And again, you can also switch to time. Inside the trunk in the top center, that little box sticking down, that's the Harman Kardon amplifier for the HK audio package that's on this car as well. I don't know if you can actually read it, it says Harman Kardon right in the center in there. I'll run through the controls. There's an automatic heat system for you. I have it on manual now. You can manually select which zones you want cooled, any one or, or several of them. You can manually select the fan speed. Fan works all the way up all the way down. When you drop out to the bottom of it, it actually shuts the system off. Bring the fan speed back up, it comes back on. Temperature control up and down, but this temperature just changes depending on uh, what the outside temperature is. To get it to actually function, you need to turn on the air conditioner, which actually works very nicely. Um, there's recirculate. That's a smart recirculate. It automatically will determine if the air has a number of particulates in it and turn the circuit recirculate on or you can force recirculate on there or back to fresh air. The automatic setting over here automatically adjusts everything. The air conditioner, fan speed, and where the fan locations of where the air is ducted out. In the center of the dash is your manual control. There's two vents here and you can scroll this little wheel from really cold to kind of neutral to really hot. Uh, I never quite understood why the Germans chose to make that independent of the rest of the system, but nonetheless it is. So um, there's a system in full auto, auto fan, uh, auto location, etc. There is a front defrost setting that cranks the AC up to max to really get your windows defrosted quick. And there's a rear defroster as well. Moving down to the lower things, there's the, in addition to the Harman Kardon system, has a um, nice, like a, it's a kind of a stereophonic amplification system or something. This is disable the stability control. We talked about that earlier. These are the heated seats. There's three settings, max on, uh, medium or low and then off. Uh, sport setting changes the rate that the throttle throttle opens. It's an electronic drive-by-wire throttle control and sport setting just ramps it up to be much more aggressive 
Uh, this button you use if you had a tire go flat to reset the whole system. And of course there's passenger heated seat as well. I'm going to cycle through that Skyler. Full, medium, low, off. Thank you. In the center console left to right of the shift pattern are the four window controls. This car is automatic up and down. Can you push it down, Skylar? That's the front right passenger. Once you push it, it goes all the way down by itself. If you lift it up, lift it up, let go, it will go up by itself with one touch. The driver's side is similar. If you push it, it will run all the way down by itself. And if you lift it up, it will run all the way up by itself. The back two windows are pop-out vents. If you push them down, they will run all the way up, down by themselves. You do need to manually bring them up as an anti-pitch feature, so to bring them up, they don't auto-close. You do have to hold them up for them to come up all the way. Here's the right rear window. I'll show you the, that's the auto-out feature. The window opening all the way. If I want a glare coming off the window. And I'm holding the button now to get it to close all the way. And here is the left rear button. Here's the auto out one, opening it up all the way, and now I will hold the button to close it all the way. We're going to demonstrate the hazard lights and the window lock button as well. Can you push that hazard light, Skylar? See, it flashes there, Scotty moves his finger, and you'll see, if you can see him in the dash, both of the indicators are on. Scotty, can you turn that off now, please? And the power lock button, hit that, please. It does not lock the gas. Hit it again, please, Skylar. That's the passenger side, and here's the driver's side. Hit it again, please. Fully functional unlock, please. There are two storage cubbies in here. The first one is the original cigarette lighter system, and I want to show you this car has never ever been smoked in. If you look at the original cigarette lighter, you'll see it's never once touched anything or even been used, although I have used the power, uh, power adapter before. And the ashtray is clean as well. And then a small storage bin in here. You can put your small little knickknacks and such. In between the center console is a small storage area. You can rotate it up all the way. It has two cup holders in between there, but if you have the second cup in the back, uh, you need to have that tipped up all the way. Inside of this is also a small storage area. You can fit a pair of sunglasses, some change, or whatever other loose things you want in that storage area. There's also a small coin storage, which is pretty clever, uh, that tips up and rotates through to move your hand out of the way so that you can see it. Uh, it fits three different size coins in here. You can throw pennies, nickels, quarters, times, whatever. Typically throw your pennies away and put the rest of the stuff in there. On the passenger side of the car, there's a glove box as well. It provides some storage, er storage area in there as well. You can close it up now. And there's also a flashlight. Yes, yeah, so there is a rechargeable yeah. flashlight. Okay. You want to pull that out, Skylar? So you always have a flashlight with you. Turn it on for him, in case you need it, and it never runs down because it's just recharging off the car all the time.